So we do have some people joining us and we'll add them along as we go, um, but I'd like to go ahead and start once. Thank you all for being here. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day uh, to meet with us uh, as we go through this uh, definitely weird time in uh, uh, American history, world history, and uh, Citadel history. So what I'd like to do first is kind of give the lay of the land of what we'll be doing for this today. Uh, I'll give an introduction of Mike and Russell. We'll kind of go through the ground rules of what we're going to do here. Uh, and then Mike is going to dive in and answer some questions that were submitted to us as well. Uh, if you have a question for either of them or myself, uh, there's a chat feature. If you move your mouse to the bottom of the screen, uh, it'll say chat. Please uh, share that uh, with the group <laughs> go through and answer all those questions. Um, we still have some folks coming in here. A little bit late, but uh, anyway, uh, what, what, first off, introduce Mike Capasio, who's our Director of Athletics, as well as Russell Frierson with the Brigadier Foundation. Uh, Mike, if you'd like to go ahead and start, uh, feel free to, and I will continue to add people to this chat. Kevin, thank you very much. <clears throat> Everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Um, we can't thank you all for your support, what you've done to help the uh, Citadel program, especially athletics. We, we know we can always count on you folks. You've always been there for us, and we appreciate that. Um, this is a good opportunity for us to get some things out. We haven't had contact with people for a long time, as everybody knows, but we have a, a pretty lengthy list of questions that me and Russell will go down and try to get through. I think Kevin already talked about any football questions. Coach will be on. Uh, and he can answer those because I don't know if our defensive backs are going to be any better this year or what, what we're going to run on offensive sets and things like that. So coach can answer those questions for you. But I will start with one of the questions that is obviously a uh, top priority for everybody and especially for me, and that is the east side stands. Um, obviously, we had a fundraising plan moving forward, had some good commitments to get started with this thing, kind of got a little setback. Um, with what's happened across, not only to us, obviously, but across the country, was talking with our fundraising team yesterday. And we will gear this up again within the next two weeks to a month to try to start raising funds for that project again. With that, the one thing that we have to understand is we have to have the money in hand before we start that project. We, uh, in the past, have not done, done that. We, right now, are not going to occur any more debt in any way. I think the financial situation, you all know what we're in. Uh, obviously, our money's got cut across the board. Right now, we do have a financial hold to plug. But I feel very, very good that we're going to be able to do this that, this year. I'm a little worried about next year. So some of the steps that we're taking are we are cutting uh, some budgets across the board. We are going to be traveling closer to home. We are going to possibly have less comp uh, less. Uh, competitions uh, uh, in, in some sports. Uh, out of season travel will be at a minimum. Um, and we're just looking at different things like that. Uh, we're looking at a straight 10% cut across the board. That will allow us to not have to furlough anybody, to not have to reduce any coaches' salaries and things like that. And remember, when you're talking about our coaches, we have a lot of people here working here that are making $35,000, $40,000, dollars $50,000 a year. And it is very difficult to live in the city of Charleston when you're making that type of money. So our senior staff, we have agreed that the way that we're going to address this thing is through the budget and to make uh, tighten things up, uh, become more lean if we can, because across the board, we're about as lean as we can get. Very quickly, when you look at other schools in the conference, there's a lot of schools that are struggling way past what we are doing. That is because they have overextended themselves in the past, and we have not. So we're in decent financial shape. I'm not going to say good. It's definitely not good. But it's a situation that we can address and we can get a handle on this year. Next year is the unknown, obviously, and I'll, talk, I'll answer some of these questions. Again, getting back to the east side stands, we will kick that fundraising back off in the next couple of weeks to try to get that going. We have had some very good interest from some major donors to try to step up and help us with that. But again, we're going to have the money in hand or the money committed before we start moving forward with that. There was a question about um, putting new seats in uh, McAllister Fieldhouse. 
rather than trying to address the east side. The east side is used five times a year. McAllister Fieldhouse between athletics, leadership, graduation, and all the other things that they do here is probably used close to 100 times a year. That money, a lot of that money came from the school in a joint effort with athletics. <clears throat> and we've been working on this for a while to replace those seats. I think everybody that's been in that gym knows how bad those seats are and how embarrassing that situation was. You're also talking about a project that is about a fifth of the cost of what the east side stands on. So that project was moving forward. We feel good about that. As a matter of fact, right now they are in the gym. Those new chairs should be in by June 1st. On another quick topic before I start in the questions, the, the turf. The turf is absolutely looking spectacular. It is the state of the art turf. It is one of the best fields in the country right now. Maybe the best field in this town. We're very excited about that. The donor spent, spared no cost on this. Everything was done first class. And we appreciate that. And we are very excited about, about that. There was a question about what can we do now that we have that turf down. Instead of using that facility five times a year, we're looking at ways to generate revenue. As a matter of fact, if we get a clearing, we'll do our first concert in Johnson Haygood on, on July 3rd. Now, that's if we get there. We're not there yet, obviously. But we're going to do concerts. We're going to do festivals. We're going to do events to try to generate revenue. That revenue can come back to the athletic department to help fill some shortfalls and help with future projects. So we're very excited about that opportunity and what that will allow us to do. That's not going to happen overnight. As you know, concerts and things are booked years in advance. But what's happened is with this spring, what's going on, uh, everybody's scrambling, everything's been canceled. And so we might have an opportunity to sneak in here and try to get a few things done, uh, which we'll we, we greatly, greatly need. Our senior staff, uh, Jeff Von Dolan's done a great job working on the budget, getting things, and we're gonna be very, very close this year. And then, you know, 2021, I'm, I'm a little worried, but we're going to get that taken care of. That's our number one priority here is to be financially stable. And by us being financially stable in the past, we we're able to take on this challenge a lot better than a lot of our other peer institutions. So I'm going to go down this list that Kevin has. I talked a little bit about the East Side stands already. Um, full schedule we played in football. That is a true unknown. Right now, not only us, Clemson, USC, everybody in the country, there is an unknown. We don't know if we're going to have a football season. We don't know if we're going to have half a season. We don't know if we're going to have a delayed start. There is nothing that is concrete in that, and there is no answers to those questions. I wish there was. And that's what really sets you back and really hurts you is the unknown of what's going on, because we do not know what's going on with that. I can tell you one thing. If the cadets or, or students do not come back to campus, I do not see us having any football, okay? If the cadets or students do not come back to campus, I don't see any way to have football. I do not see football being played in front of empty stadiums. If the students don't come back, the athletes won't come back. Remember, they're students first and athletes second. And that's kind of my take on where that is with that. But I firmly believe that that is the key. How does that all get to that point? It'll be a lot of it will be mandated, obviously, by the NCAA, but it will really be mandated by the health experts in this country to relay that information. What can we do? Where can we go? How many people can we have? So there is a lot of unknowns about that. So I don't have any direct answers to those questions. I have about a two hour call every day with our league. We've been on numerous conference calls to try to figure those situations out. I am really hoping that we can get started back to normal on July 1st. If we can start our, our young people get on campus, summer school opens up, we will definitely be having football in the fall. What does not having football mean for us? It means um, it is a huge move because what happens with that is if football gets canceled, and not only football, but all fall sports. And remember, if football starts, all fall sports start, not just football. We are moving forward with all our fall sports, volleyball, soccer, everything else will move forward along with that. So it's not just football that we're talking about here. But if that doesn't start and our cadets and students do not come back on campus, there are going to be some very, very hard decisions made. Um, and those decisions are going to be furloughing people, obviously. Because you can't Mike. all these Hello? Mike, if, Mike if, let, let me jump in real quick ahead, on that. Please. I'm sorry, and, Russell. And 
I, I would say that obviously it's not totally up to us and it's the NCAA and, it, and it's, it's the country in a, in a hole in the state. However, we're going to plan um, to be optimistic here. We're going to plan that we're, we're going to come back and we're going to, and we're going to play football and we're going to play these fall sports. And that's the, and that's kind of the mindset we have to have going forward. Um, and until somebody says we can't, then we, we got to be positive and, and move forward just like we would at any other spring and summer. Russell, that is a great point. And, you know, probably about a month ago, there was a lot more uncertainty. The point that Russell just made is we are planning for our young people to be on campus in July, and we are planning to start football and have our first game in September. Okay, that's what we are planning for. We are planning for nothing different until we are told. Um, okay, well, let me get back to some of these questions. Um, about the recruiting, I'll be honest with you, our recruiting has actually gone very well this year. Our coaches are finding uh, they have a lot of time to contact with individuals for the circumstances that we have. Obviously, it's very difficult when you can't bring young people on campus. Um, the Citadel is a different animal, as we all know. So our coaches are doing a very, very good job of this. I'm very proud of what they've accomplished. And when, when this whole thing started, one of the things that I told them is, your role is now changing. You are no longer a coach. You are an academic advisor. You are responsible for your young people's <clears throat> academic success through this very difficult time, which is obviously online learning. Online learning doesn't do anybody any good, but at the Citadel, what these young people have missed out on it's, it's at a different level than just at regular college even. So it's been very difficult as far as that has gone. Uh, as I said, um, the, some of the other questions about the east side stands we've talked about a little bit. Um, let me see here. The updates on SOCON fall plans for sports. Like I said, right now we are planning to move forward. Um, that is a certainly an unknown. And I apologize for not having any answers for these, some of these things. But we are not the only ones that don't have any answers. Everybody in the country doesn't have any answers. Um, if you look across <clears throat> what is going on across college athletics, um, Louisville furloughed 45 employees. They're fur furloughing another 40. So people are going about this a different way. How we're going about it, as I told you earlier, was adjusting and working through the budget. Uh, Russell, can you talk to how do we plan to work on that lost revenue for the spring and some fundraising ideas? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I want to thank everybody for being on this. This was something that kind of came around organically pretty quick. And um, we're, we're used to, especially in our office, getting out and seeing all y'all's faces. And uh, we've missed them, believe it or not, even though that y'all probably don't. Um, but we, we've missed seeing y'all. We missed talking to y'all as much as we have in, in the past. But um, we appreciate y'all taking the time and listening to Mike and I, even though that you probably – didn't have anything better else to do quarantine at home, but listen to us, but we appreciate it either way. Um, but, you know, going forward, we, we took a hit right at the beginning of this and that was the, that was our auction. Um, we, we canceled that about three weeks before or two weeks before um, that auction. And this was the, the first auction that we were going to have off campus. Um, we spent a lot of money, a lot of time and a lot of efforts in making this one of the, probably the biggest fundraisers that we've ever had. And we were really excited about it, but obviously the health and well-being of our donors and staff and everybody else was the most important thing. Um, so we took a hit on that. It is obviously the, the right call to do. Um, we still have some fundraising efforts, um, events coming up that we, we're still unsure of. Our, our largest, our biggest attended one is our kickoff classic in August. Uh, we've been meeting with our, our committee uh, recently, and we're just going to hold off to do those fundraising efforts that we usually start about now. Um, we're going to wait until probably June 1st to really look at the look at the landscape and the environment. But right now, we're going to plan on having the kickoff classic. Whether it's going to look different or not, I'm not sure. Uh, it's all going to depend on the the environment um, when August comes around. But we're going to try to make up some efforts there, and we're going to need y'all's help with that. But I think the, the, most important, the most important thing that I can tell you all right now is we've had an absolute wonderful fundraising year um, in the first quarter that we've, we're super proud of and we're in, we're in good position. However, I, I will say this, uh, going forward, 
the the most important thing and one of the questions, a couple of the questions is what can we do for 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 you and Mike? And I would say I would say give. Give give to the ability that you can give. Uh, and one of those ways that you can give, if it's not a membership, is our Brigadier Fund. Our Brigadier Fund is the, is an unrestricted account that, that kind of helps offset a lot of the budgetary items Mike has, and we can give to to Mike and the athletic department to really make make an impact. One of the, one of those ways that I think a lot of y'all may have seen recently was the total renovation, and Mike jump in on this: the total renovation of the the strength and conditioning center that has been a huge impact to these kids and our brigadier board some of them i see y'all's faces on here right now voted um last year to totally renovate this weight room and a lot of that money a, a quarter of a million dollars from the brigadier foundation came and did that and we we felt like we focused so much in the past on our building our scholarship endowment that we were really wanted to make an impact on these kids while they were here now and these kids go to that weight room every day. And without y'all support and the support um, of Brigadier members over the country, uh, that wouldn't have been possible, whether you're a member at $125 level or a $25,000 level, that money matters. And that was a culmination of years of people giving to get this project done. Mike, jump in on the impact of that. Yeah, and Russell, with that, the most important thing to do, and and one of the things that uh, we've tried to do in athletics and when I was in the foundation as well, that is used by every team. That benefited every team, okay, which is huge. And that's, and, and that's a plus. Also, some upper-level cadets get to use it. So we've made it accessible to a lot of other people besides our athletes. But that changes the whole program when you do something like that because it covers everything. It's just like the track. Everybody uses the track. The practice field that we have for football, club teams, everybody uses that. The cadets use that. The intramurals use that. So those are improvements that have made when we put the new scoreboard in the gym. That's used at leadership day. That's used at graduation. It's used at a lot of different things. The new seats in the gym will be used for a lot of different groups, not just men's basketball, wrestling, volleyball. So those are some really strong points. Um, let me jump back in, Russell, then I want you to jump on a couple more things. Okay, partner? Um, somebody asked about cutting any programs. At this time, I do not want to cut any programs. Um, that is at the top of my list to maintain all our athletic teams. Remember, when you talk about athletics at the Citadel, we are athletics, yes, but we also are provide diversity. Almost 50% of our African Americans are athletes. 45% of our women are athletes. That is very important to how we look as a campus, as a college, and we need to keep that diversity. It's very important to us. It's very important to our senior leadership. So at this time, we are not planning on cutting any programs. Now, don't get me wrong. We don't play football next year. That's going to have to be a readdress. But right now, that is not in the books. Um, another question that I had was, will there be any changes made to the basketball program? No, there will not. Coach Balcom has a year, has some time on his contract. We are 100% behind him, 100% supportive of him and his staff to move forward and have a great year. I think you recall last year we had some tough breaks. We have some very good young people, but myself and our administration across campus is behind Coach. And yes, he is going to, he's going to get this thing back on track for us. So we're excited about that opportunity. Uh, I talked about it a little bit earlier, but the recruiting has gone a little bit better than we anticipated. I think one of the things that happened to us here is that a lot of times young people will look at other schools and have some opportunities, and those opportunities are closing up a lot quicker. So it's opened up a new pipeline for uh, cadet athletes for us, and all our coaches are working very hard. And, and like I said earlier, it is difficult when you can't bring these people on campus, um, but they're doing a good job with it. And like I said earlier, I'm very, very proud of them. The, I talked a little bit earlier about the generating opportunities. Lost revenue from the spring. Let me talk about that a little bit. When you talk about lost revenue, when you bring South Carolina and you bring Clemson in for baseball, that's a lot of money for us. That generates a lot of revenue, close to 80, 90, $100,000. Obviously, that didn't happen. But our teams also didn't travel in the spring. 
So a lot of that got offset with some of that monies as well too. Right now, we are still in the process of putting that whole thing together financially. Like I said, we're gonna be very, very close this year. And then 21, who knows what that brings. Um, but we're prepared for it. We're prepared for it because we've been so lean. Hey, we, have, we, don't, we, we don't have much to cut. So unfortunately, we're there already. But um, Russell, did you wanna jump in on anything else with that? Or did you wanna go <clears throat> ahead two on those questions, sir? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in on that. Um, I just got a, a chat question. Um, that's a, a pretty good one that we've we've got a lot of phone calls in the past past a couple months on, and that is um, a non a non citadel neighbor asked if they could get an annual parking pass to the Citadel Beach Club, um, making a small donation. The answer is yes. Um, we at the Brigadier Foundation, if you give, I think it's the the twelve hundred fifty dollar level, you you automatically they get you a, a Citadel Beach House parking pass. So. And this, in the same way, if, if, if your passion is given to non-athletics and to the Citadel Foundation, there's, there's is about the same, same cost as that as well. Um, so yeah, BrigadierFoundation.com and sign up to be a member of that level and they can, and the pass that we give them will get us, get them to the uh, beach, beach club. Um, and another, another thing on, on a fundraising note that I think that a lot of y'all probably received yesterday and, and Monday were emails about Citadel Giving Day. This was something that the Citadel Foundation and us kind of went back and forth with um, about when to have it. Uh, we postponed it once. Is it, is it the right time? We wanted to be sensitive to everybody. Um, and we're going to go forward with it on May 19th. And May 19th is a big day for that. So it, another way that, you know, Citadel alumni can help is, is to give back on, on Giving Day. And a way that you can do that to support athletics is to give to the Brigadier Fund like we talked about shortly ago, and there'll be a tab on that um, when it goes live on the 19th. Or you can go there now at uh, www.citadelfoundation.edu backslash giving day. Um, it's live right now. So th those are some ways that that Brigadier Fund's huge, and it's huge for us to be able to give the money to Mike so he can make sure that these cadets have the best experience that they can have. Uh, Russell, this is Kevin. I want to jump in at some of the questions uh, that we came up as a group that I'm sure people would want to know about our renewal deadline. Uh, renewal, I believe that's re June 15th. Yeah, so usually the renewal deadline for clubs and, and suite tickets are, are in April. Um, obviously, it wasn't a good time to send that stuff out. We didn't feel like it was appropriate. So we pushed that back to, to June 15th. For club and suites, if you have those, make sure that those are either paid or, or pledged um, so we can get those renewals in. And, and if people don't renew their tickets, we can go down the list and make sure that everybody's taken care of that or is on our waiting list. Um, but June 15th is a day for that. And then the uh, if there are waiting lists for that, they can, uh, you'll contact them after the 15th, that's correct? Yeah, after the 15th, we want to make sure everybody renews first. And those that don't, we'll go down to the priority points um, waiting list. Um, one of the questions that I have for those people that, that have season tickets on here, uh, season ticket pickup right now is set for June, uh, July 30th and 31st. Again, that's July 30th and 31st in the Pearson Club level. Um, the time each day is to be determined, but we'll send that information out. As you may have seen last week, we put out information about uh, tickets. We're doing some new things here. This year, obviously, the Brigadier Foundation has extended their deadline. The uh, department has also uh, implemented the refund if for some reason the season doesn't happen. Uh, because of the COVID-19, uh, we'll have a refund on that. You can check our citadelsports.com release. Um, renewal deadline has been extended to July 23rd, so we want to let people know about that. If you have uh, friends in the area that are up in the air about getting tickets, uh, they can contact our ticket office. Uh, we actually have a member of our staff uh, on this call actually in, in there in the ticket office right now to help out. Um, and then Meet the Bulldogs right now is really set for August 22nd from 1 to 3 p.m. Again, that's the 22nd from 1 to 3 p.m. Again, things change. <coughs> uh, May 6th, that's, that's the date that we've got here. Uh, a question we have here, um, do the funds collected per the current contract with the Marine Corps funnel into the athletic department? Mike, if you would like to answer that question. 
Um, no, they do not. Um, but what happens with that is, first off, let me tell you about that very quickly. Um, I, I don't want to give any, I'm, I'm not sure of the number, so I'll, I'll, I'll be careful with that. But obviously when you have no cadets on campus, you are generating no revenue through selling coffee and, 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 and chicken sandwiches and laundry and all those type of things, soda machines. There's no money coming in through auxiliaries. Uh, obviously there was a huge refund that needed to be given to the cadet athletes for housing and things like that as well too. The school had was looking at quite a deficit to make those things, um, to fill those holes. Having the Marines on campus has done that. That will help us out financially, but that will go to the bottom line of the school. It's our responsibility here to be as financially secure as we can and as tight so that the school doesn't have to help us and that's my number one goal. Uh, the school has its own issues to deal with. They are very generous and they have helped us in any way that they possibly can. Uh, the senior staff, General Walters over there, our CFO, everybody has been very generous and we appreciate that. But that money will go to the, to the college, which is very badly needed. Um, but it's helped us. It's, what it's really helped us do is number one, kind of get back to normalcy here. It's, it's good to have people walking around. It's good to see people moving around. Uh, and, and things like that in, in a safe manner, obviously. Uh, I wanted to, uh, to talk about one other thing, Kevin, we'll take some more questions after this. When Russell was talking earlier on, and Russell uh, on this topic, you guys know my philosophy, or most of you do, that we do not raise money to plug holes in budgets. And that is not what we're going to do. It's my job to get us financially lean within our budget to be able to have a bottom line that is zero. We need to make it work there. Fundraising dollars are used for special projects, scholarships, and different things like that. But at no time do I want to go to people and raise money and say, hey, can you help us out and use that money to plug a budget? That's my job. That's our department's job. Um, and that's we will make that happen. So please be assured that if you do give money, we are going to get it, and we are going to make a cadet experience better with that money. Kevin, you got more questions or? Uh, yeah, uh, one a question that we had is, uh, you know, with the turf being installed, people want to come out, and check it out. Uh, is that an option right now? No, it's currently under construction. But once uh, campus reopens, obviously the stadium reopens as well. If you want to come out and uh, check out seats, your current seats, where it relates to the field, call our ticket office. We'd be happy to take you over there. Trust us. Uh, our ticket office is can't wait to get uh, back and showing people off the stadium. So if it's something check out seats, ask us. We you know we we want to be able to meet you there. Uh, but once the campus opens back up, we do want to get you out there so you can look at uh, your seats. Potentially, you want to move your seats again. If you have friends that want to do it, we're we're here to help you out and do as much as we possibly can. Um, there was a uh, for uh, that was asked about if the teams will do a fundraiser uh, like they did with the Adidas uh, last year. Uh, that question, I don't know if Mike or Russell knows, but what I can say is we will get that information uh, to the person that asked. Again, I believe that's team by team that makes that decision. Uh, question for you, Mike, um, if the season does get canceled or postponed, can you ask a season to donate their season ticket money to the Brigadier Fund for uh, versus refunding it? Is that an option? Will they have the opportunity to donate that? I'm sorry, Kevin? Y yeah, the question is, if it does get canceled or postponed, can we ask season ticket holders to donate their ticket money? Um, I think the answer is yes. I mean, it's their choice. You, it, you can do what you choose with that. Russell, Mike, do you see that? Yeah. Being no, I think it, that's a very good point. Um, and, and the answer is yes, you can definitely do that. And we can go back to baseball and you can touch on that here in a minute, Kevin. But um, in the same way with the auction, we were going to give refunds back for, for the auction and not uh, a single person asked for a, a refund for their tickets. And I think the same way was for the baseball season as well, which I, I say that to say congratulations for the Citadel alumni. That, that speaks volumes of the, the passion and love that they have for this institution um, that they're not just giving to get something they're given to, to give. And, and that, and that means a lot. So if the, if the football season is canceled and you've already bought your season tickets, we can use that as a donation for sure. 
One question actually got messaged to me privately is Mike and Russell, what are two of your favorite moments from this past year? Uh, is it at, athletically speaking, either in the department or from our cadet athletes? I'm sorry, Kevin, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Sure, sure. Uh, the question was sent to me uh, directly. Um, what were your favorite moments from this past season? It could either be a, a cadet athlete, uh, a game uh, match, or something that happened in the athletics department. What was your moment that you remember <clears throat> from this past year? Well, first off, uh, my biggest enjoyment is always seeing how well our cadets do academically. Um, first semester, we had over a three-point GPA. That is a tremendous accomplishment. I don't know if people really understand the time commitment that these people have. We have a lot of our, most of our cadet athletes are taking 18 hours. So that's a, a moment of pride for me when I see that. I see them excelling academically. I see what they're doing in the core. We have more uh, uh, athletes in leadership roles than we've ever had before. Um, I think one of the one of the sporting events, obviously, it certainly was fun to go down there and kick Furman's behind when they were the first place team in the conference, and not only kick the behind, but kick it very, very, very well. Um, that was a, that was a very enjoyable moment uh, as far as athletics go. We've had some big wins across the board. Uh, I think the success that our women's soccer and women's volleyball team have been achieving, they are, those programs are getting so much better under that type of leadership. But I, I think the, the thing I'm proudest of if you really look across the board, and I was a little down a while, a while back, and somebody came in my office and said, hey, Mike, this year, we renovated the weight room, thanks to Russell and his crowd and some very generous donors. We're putting a million and a half dollar turf field down. You're putting new seats into the gym to improve that facility. We had some private donations, again, some very, very generous donors that we were able to renovate our athletic hallways, if you haven't had a chance to stop up and see them, please do. The compliance area. Instead of our young people, our cadet athletes, sitting on a floor in a hallway, uh, we got somebody to help us with some carpet. I called a couple donors who sent us some leather couches and things like that. If you haven't had a chance, please come and see it. Um, that's probably my, our, my biggest accomplishment, is being able to get four things done to that magnitude in one year which since I've been here, we not, have not been able to do that. Now, don't get me wrong. That is not me. That's everybody else that's done that. Um, so I'm very, very proud of what everybody else accomplished to get to that point. But those are big accomplishments for a mid-major school like us to get four major projects like that done in a year, I can tell you that. And I'm very, very proud of that. And that is, again, from our generosity of our donors, our support that we have in the community and from our alumni, that's what makes that happen. But when I tell people that, they're like, wow. So made me feel a little better that day. So uh, I, 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 those are big things for us, Kevin, for you. All right. Russell, uh, you got a favorite moment or experience from this past uh, yeah. athletic <laughs> I, th I think a couple. Uh, obviously, Georgia Tech was fun. It, it's great to see kids with with not as uh, the probably the the most athletic prowess as another team, or or the or the funds to to get better. To actually say that that doesn't really always matter. Um, that that's always fun to see. Um, our, our memorial fund banquet this year was very impactful. Um, listening to two cadets tell their tell their life story and how much the scholarships mean to them. That is one of my favorite events every year. Um, that we have. And I think last year was really, really moving to kind of hear these cadets um, do what they do. Uh, but I think, you know, just moving forward, I think on the fundraising side, I met with a guy that is in his upper 80s up in New Jersey this year. And he, he, did, he doesn't give to athletics all that much, but he gave a seven figure gift this year um, simply because of what these cadets are doing on campus and what they're representing. Um, so these cadets are just as big as fundraisers as we are um, in these offices because their reputation, the school's reputation is what is motivating these people um, that don't typically um, give as much. Um, this guy gives because of these kids that he was so kind of amazed by. Good, good. Uh, question Mike comes from Chet. How much money is needed for the East Side Stands project? Do we have that? Do you have that final number? Chet doesn't get to ask questions. Go ahead, keep Russell. I said Chet uh, doesn't get to ask questions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we got 
him and, and Wayne and, uh, Foster and, and Will, uh, a couple of these guys on lockdown, they don't have a choice. They can't say anything. But uh, I, I tell you what, that number is probably 2.5 to $3 million right there. I think if we had $2.5 million committed, we could move forward, um, probably complete everything we want to do. It would be close to $3 million to do it right the way we want to do it. Um, also remember, with the east side stands uh, and our football facility, yes, we're making a big improvement with the turf, but our scoreboard is going on, what, 12, 13, 14 years old? That thing's out the door. That's awesome over in a million dollar project. So we've got a lot of things that we've got to gear up to and, and, and get done for Johnson Haygood. And right now, obviously this has set us back a little bit, um, but we're, we're ready to meet that challenge and we're ready to move forward. And we will. Uh, one of the questions came from Travis, more of a, an external question and, I, and I'll answer that. Uh, question was, or the statement was, social media interaction from the athletic department has been excellent. Travis, thank you for that. Uh, some of my, some of our staff is on here right now. Hopefully I get to see them. I'd like to share that your message with them uh, after this call as well. Uh, the next part of that is what is the level of interest in having video vignettes of some of our student athletes and coaches seeing their faces, hearing their voices may increase engagement amongst our core audience and expand our reach. Absolutely. We're absolutely doing that. We just hired a new staff member. Um, I'm trying to think of when he got, he got here right at the end of basketball season. So it was February. Drew Patterson uh, comes to us from Samford. He's kind of coordinating all that from the athletics department side. Um, he and Danielle Dillahay have been working on that. And then obviously our, our communication staff has done a lot as well. Um, yes. Do we want to do that? Absolutely. When our cadet athletes get back, we're going to do that. We'd like to do a lot more video. Uh, right now we have to be cognizant of their time. This is obviously during finals week. So there are certain things we can do, certain things we can't. If you have ideas, and this goes to anybody, Travis in particular, if you have ideas of things that you want us to show or showcase, email me, klevet at citadel.edu. Uh, there's one other, Kevin, in the athletics department. He works in the equipment room. If you send it to him, sure enough, he'll send it to me. So if there's things you want to see, we, we want to we know. Uh, one of the things we do have coming up soon uh, that our external staff has been working on is the college – 30th anniversary of them going to the College World Series. Actually, uh, 30 years ago yesterday, they played Cal State Fullerton. They went to extra innings and they ended up winning that game. Uh, we got some pretty cool things planned for that. Uh, and that's taking place through uh, in marketing. Danielle in marketing and John in communications are working on that stuff. So those are some things that we definitely want to add. Another question, uh, can we tie in football season ticket pickup? with a chance to see and get on the new turf. Yes, we're working on that. We hope to do a dedication as well. Uh, when that's going to happen exactly, we don't know. But yes, if you come and get your tickets and we're playing football, I can't, a person in our department that want to show off the field. So yes, that, that is a, a, something we can do. Um, question from Paul, has there been any drop off in corporate sponsorships in light of the financial situation? Uh, unfortunately, yes, there has. Uh, we've had a couple so far, um, and to give a little bit of background on that, uh, we recently outsourced our corporate sponsorships to Peak Sports Management. Uh, they're here. We have a guy, uh, boots on the ground, if you will. Uh, his name is AJ Hantech. He's on our staff directory. He's here. I believe he lives on James Island, John's Island. I get those two mixed up all the time. I apologize. But he's here. That He's charge of growing that and that's one of the things that we're going to do. Uh, I have friends at other schools, some more than others are dropping off, uh, but for the most part people see the value of partnering with the Citadel. They understand the loyalty, they understand the affluence of, the, uh, of our graduates, and they understand what it's like to partner with a school that's been a part of Charleston for the past, I believe, 175 years. Uh, but yes, there has been always looking for new people. Uh, shameless plug, if you own a business or know someone owns a business that wants to work with the athletics department, klevet at citadel.edu, um, we would love to know. Uh, AJ is relatively new. He actually, his first day was the first day they put school, um, uh, they had everybody work from home. So he is 
been in a couple of times, but he hasn't officially been into the office. But if you have people that you want us to know or think we should know, tell Russell, tell Mike, tell me. We're happy to get out and see them. Trust me, he has got a uh, prospect list uh, longer than Santa's naughty or nice list. Um, we got some more questions on here. Uh, Will asked, uh, I know Coach Thompson is, is talking next week. Will we need to register again for that one? Yes, we will. Uh, one of the things we're going to do is get to season ticket holders, send them a <laughs> That registration will go live on Friday. Same look, if you go to citadelsports.com, uh, there is a registration tab on there. If you bear with me for a second, I will tell you exactly where it's located. Um, it is under the fan zone. So if you go to citadelsports.com, fan zone, and then fan zone again, it has dog talk registration. Uh, you can submit questions ahead of time if you would like. Um, Gaylord Green says, test. I say back to Gaylord, test. You are, that did work. Uh, question came for Mike. Mike, can you talk about the new Spike mascot outfit? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Um, we had some uh, gentlemen from the foundation, uh, Jonathan Walker, Jonathan Kreskin, uh, Bill Yeager, come over and talk to me uh, about uh, obviously improving the mascot outfit. That mascot outfit was about as old as I was, had been worn, torn, beaten up in every other way possible. They did a fundraising drive to help us raise funding and a lot more than just the outfit to get some new spike outfits, some costumes. Greatly appreciated. From what I understand, they are not here yet because they, when this whole thing broke, they uh, were, were, were back, back ordered, whatever, like everything else in the country, obviously. I can't thank those guys enough. Well, how they did that was with class challenges and they had classes step up. And I'm not going to tell you what classes those are because when you see the number on spike, you're going to know what classes those were that stood up. And so what they've done is put a challenge together. They did a great job with it. I cannot thank them enough. They took on the full responsibility to raise that. I am very, very excited to get that out and to see it. And what we want to do at that point then is we want to use it more. We want to get it out more. I had a request last night, could Spike come and make an appearance at a wedding from a Citadel grad? Well, right now, um, you know, we don't have anybody on campus to do that. We're, we're training somebody new. We don't even have the new outfit yet. But those are things in the, in the future that we are going to do with this new outfit. So I applaud these three for bringing this to us. I can't thank them enough. Obviously, I didn't have any cost in that, which I greatly appreciate. And then again, it's just making our program better. So, very excited about it. Very excited about the new spike. I think everybody will be. Uh, something, uh, one of the questions that uh, was asked of Mike is, you know, now that we have the turf at the stadium, uh, what are we going to do? Is it going to bring in new revenue? Uh, again, to expand on what Mike said, yes, uh, we're going to try and rent as many athletics facilities as we possibly can. Um, how do we do that? Uh, it's connections. Mike has connections. Uh, the, we're working with the Charleston Sports Commission as well. Uh, one of the things that our staff has done in anticipation of the, those new um, venues or events coming online or coming to the Citadel is we've updated our website. Uh, in fact, I'd like to take a moment, if I could, to recognize uh, the staff that I work with for their time on this. Uh, we've updated a lot. Ticket page has been updated with the most current information. Um, communication pages, we've got a lot more history. We're actually, our staff is starting to go through photos and scan those in, uh, which is one of the things that we're looking to do for that College World Series team. Uh, on the topic of facilities, if you were to go to citadelsports.com and uh, look up our website, we've got information on there. We've completely redone our facilities page right now. So you uh, can see that under Tide Athletics and then facilities. Again, we want to make ourselves the most marketable that we possibly can. So in the past, people would see an aerial photo of Johnson Haygood. Now they actually can see what the suites look like. Now they can see what the club looks like. Now they can see what this looks like and that looks like. Same thing with McAllister Fieldhouse. If we can do more events, we want to make it as easy as 
possible for people to check us out. And one of those areas was, was um, uh, fixing and cleaning up that website, which we've done. One of the things we've yet to do, we're gonna add a video feature uh, that's going to kind of do a walking tour of all those facilities as well. So if you get a chance, go ahead and check that out. We, we do appreciate that. Uh, question that just came in, what can we do to market school outside of the bookstore? Uh, great question. Um, actually, man, I Thank you for asking this, Rob. First thing, first, when you go to a uh, place that carries other school gear, simply by asking, hey, do you have any Citadel gear? That's one of the easiest ways to do that. It's very easy to go to the person and say, do you carry any Citadel stuff? No, I don't. Do you realize how many Citadel alums live in this area? Uh, that's something that is an easy ask. If there's a, a store in the Charleston area, or particularly anywhere in South Carolina or in the country, um, let us know. Uh, we work with our licensing partner, CLC, out of Atlanta, and we can ask them to, you know, to help to get our name or get our products uh, in there. If there's a particular store in the area, let us know. Feel free. You can email me, um, and then we can we can uh, get CLC involved. They can do this or get more gear out there but the easiest and number one way to see our gear out there is ask for it if you get four or five or six or 12 or 100 people going into a, uh, a dick sporting goods stuff the odds are that chance they may start ordering because they're going to order what people want to buy um uh, next question paul asks have you considered a helmet sticker and some other recognition for Rashad Graham. Uh, Mike, would you like to answer that question? At this time, we're still talking about things like that, but um, no decisions have been made yet. Uh, any, any other questions? I have one here that was sent to me privately. Uh, I'll answer that, uh, just not yet, but I, I, I do want to answer any other questions. If you do have a question, type it in here. Um, so, uh, what are you doing during this time when you're not at work? What What's going on? What are you What are you doing to 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 keep active or or to kind of break free from the monotony of this? Go ahead, Russell. I'll jump in afterwards. Well, I have a uh, I have a three year old who has more energy than I I could imagine. So that's kind of kept me pretty busy, along with a wife that's to do with our second child in July. So. <laughs> With that going on, I don't really have much to do. Um, but I come in the office just to try to get away from that that craziness every once in a while. But um, it's been it's been a it's been a lot of fun to be home though, um, and actually get to experience um, you know being with my son most most times. So I've actually quite enjoyed this quarantine lifestyle. Uh, on the other hand, I have not. And my children, who are grown now, we are not a board game family. And once we couldn't go to the beach or go bowling or go to or go golfing or miniature golfing, they had about enough of me and said, Dad, please go back to work. Uh, but for me, I've had conference calls almost every day with the conference. We, we have senior staff calls and things like that that we were working on, uh, working with the budget at all times with uh, Jeff Andola, <clears throat> working with the senior staff with Kathy and and uh, Kevin and, 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 and Robbie Bennett, those folks on different types of projects, what's going on down at the football stadium, the new bleachers, things like that. And then trying to sneak out and do a little turkey hunting and, uh, and, and bass fishing. So it's, it's uh, I'm ready to get back to work. I'm chomping at the bit, but uh, work has not stopped here. I come in just about every day, at least a couple hours a day. And so work has not stopped here. Uh, I wanna talk about this before I get off this very quickly is, Number one, I'm very proud of our donors. I, I cannot thank them for everything they have done to help us in so many different ways. They are always so supportive. And I want you to know how much I appreciate that. Number two, uh, y'all know I'm fairly new to this job. I cannot thank my staff, our coaches, and in particular, the senior staff across campus for the support that they have given us. I feel we have a wonderful relationship across campus with all groups, they have been very supportive. We have tried to do our part to support them in every way possible. But I wanna tell you folks, our coaches are doing it the right way. They have not complained. There has been no bitching in any way, shape or form about anything. We laid out our plan. They are executing our plan. 
I'm extremely proud of them, what they're doing. This department has moved forward quicker than I thought it was going to. And I'm very proud of every individual here led by the senior staff um, under General Walters' guidance and the people across campus, they have made it very easy. They have been a team player. They want us to be successful. And I think it is a very, very positive vibe that we move forward with after this. And I'll tell you one thing, I feel good about it. Uh, Mike, this uh, message came in. Um, they, I had a member ask if you will sell bass fishing lessons to Brigadier members. You don't want if that what? for Mike. If, if what? If you'll sell bass fishing lessons to Brigadier members. <laughs> hey, even a blind squirrel finds nut every once in a while. But I, I have had a good spring of fishing, I will say that. I've had a good spring of turkey. And a lot of it's thank you uh, for our alumni for having me out and inviting me out. So I appreciate you know what, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, sometimes you just need to get away, and especially during this time, but it's been good. And yeah, I can do that. I was thinking about the one started, starting a new team here, and it was a fishing team, but I don't know if General Walters was going to go with that. So we'll, we'll put that on hold for a while. Uh, feel free, if there's any other questions, feel free to go ahead and uh, ask those. One of the things, and I had the question in my mind, and I, and I just lost it of what we were going to ask, um, uh, shoot. Uh, hopefully it'll come back to me, but is, uh, Russell, you have anything uh, else, anything coming down the line, anything that anybody should know? Obviously Giving Day, we know that that is coming up. Uh, and then that link was, give me one second and I'll go back up to it. Uh, Foundation.citadel.edu slash Giving Day uh, for updates. And again, that date is May 19th. Um, you can support I athletics by selecting the Brigadier Fund as your designation on that day. So May 19th, uh, if you can, uh, go ahead and give. Russell, would you like to? Um, yeah, I think, I think coming, out of, coming out of this um, situation that everybody's in, you know, we've been solely focused um, over the past probably six, seven years on, on raising money for our endowment, which, is, which grew close to $13 million over that time. Um, which is huge. However, is that the most immediate need right now? And I, I would say that's always going to be a need and we'll continue to focus on building that. But I think coming out of this situation right now, uh, the most important thing anybody can do if you're going to give would maybe give to the Brigadier Fund in our unrestricted account. Um, so we can put that money to work as soon as we can um, and make sure Mike over there stays sane. Uh, Mike, any last uh, uh comments on here? Uh... No, just uh, one thing very quickly. Uh, you know, um, obviously we have a, a, a wonderful contract with Adidas. Um, right now that's very difficult, obviously getting apparel and things like that. So we may not get the power in the fall with some of those things. So please understand why uh, most of those, as you know, factories have closed down overseas and things like that. So we may struggle a little bit to get that. Uh, but I, then again, I, I just want to thank everybody for your support. The, the reason this department's been able to move forward is because of you and the support that we receive from across campus as well as the wonderful job our coaches and staff have done. Very happy and I appreciate everybody. Thank you. Yep. Uh, just a couple uh, housekeeping items. Uh, much like they have the uh, turf cam, uh, we're actually going to be updating photos so you can see the new seat installation. Uh, our uh, millage, uh, Austin works in our um, communications office with men's basketball. He posted a photo on Twitter. I don't, I'm not sure if it made it to Facebook or not, but you'll be able to see that. We have uh, access to uh, cameras in there, so we'll be taking stills. I don't think we'll necessarily do a live cam of that. Um, the next Citadel Sports Dog Talk will begin, will be next Wednesday. Same situation, you can ask your questions for Coach Thompson. Uh, that registration will go live on Friday. Um, the easier version, uh, as told me by my staff, get to that link, citadelsports.com slash dog talk, all one word, dog talk. Uh, so um, if there are no other questions, I'd like to thank everybody for coming to this today. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your support. Um, and thank you very much.